Good morning, Flagler County. I'm Rich Carroll. You're listening to Flagler's Morning News on Wednesday, July 21st. And this local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow you. A low COVID-19 vaccination rate is now having an effect on Flagler County's most vulnerable residents. John Arking reports. With Flagler County averaging about 50 new cases of COVID-19 per day, a rate it's been sustaining for the past few weeks, Health Officer Bob Snyder says they're now seeing documented instances in which nursing home employees are spreading COVID into the very facilities in which they work. Grand Oaks Nursing Home has 27 individuals with COVID, and the issue, we believe, is, again, low vaccination vaccination rate of healthcare workers in these facilities. Their vaccination rate for staff is 46%, and it sure needs to be higher than that. But they are taking the appropriate steps otherwise to mitigate the risk. When questioned how it was possible that elderly residents were getting COVID, Snyder says it's likely these are people who are new residents that were unvaccinated, or perhaps they've come from the hospital and were not vaccinated while there. Speaking of hospitals, Snyder says Advent Health Palm Coast has 32 patients with COVID-19, which is a record nobody wanted to set. And what's also startling is that the average age of the COVID patient has reduced by 20 years from the mid-60s down to the mid-40s. And every single one of these individuals are unvaccinated every single one. So that should tell us something. There are 100 patients at the University of Florida in Chance, and they, this was on NBC News last night, they interviewed every single one of the patients. Every single one was unvaccinated, and every single one of them regretted the fact that they did not get vaccinated. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm John Art. Palm Coast City Council members can't agree on a tentative tax rate. Amy Cherry has more. Councilman Ed Danko sought to lower the millage rate to 4.6, down from 4.69. I think the folks in this city deserve a tax break. I certainly will not vote for a tax increase. Councilman Nick Klufus objected. Councilman Danko, I think it falls onto you to do your job and discuss with us what you plan on being removed from this budget to get us to that number so that we can come to a consensus. Then the two clashed. At home, I set my budget after I go through line item by line item on my necessities, and the total of those is my budget. I don't work backwards. If you don't know where you're going to cut, isn't it a little presumptuous to be able to say, my budget right now is a thousand bucks, but next month it's going to be five hundred dollars, but then force yourself into a position where after you make that decision, you're saying, oh man, everything I had was a necessity, where am I going to squeeze that additional $500 from? I know you're half my age, but I've spent my whole life dealing with a household budget, and I can tell you that's not the way I do it. I know how much money I'm going to have every year, and I make cuts. Sometimes they're painful. Sometimes I'm giving up things that I would like to have. There are must things that we must have in this city. We must have police. We must have fire, things of that nature, EMTs, so on and so forth, the must-haves. Then there are the the things we want to have. And we'll be able to go through this, and we'll all find places to make those cuts. But I think setting this millage rate just a little lower will actually force us to take a hard look at this budget. And let's see where we end up. So my only rebuke is that's just not the best way to approach a problem. If you think it's not the best way. I feel like at this point, we're trying to just offer highlights of where, where we expect we're going, but we're not talking about how we're going to get there. And I think that's a critical part for us to do our job. And this is the opportunity that we have to do that. Do you see any place we can make a cut, one single cut? And if you do, please share with us. With all due respect, you're the one asking to reduce the proposed millage rate that was just presented to us. Are you saying no, you? With all due respect, going your route will guarantee a tax increase. Council has until August 4th to set a tentative rate. It has a meeting August 3rd when the new mayor will be sworn in. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Amy Cherry. Two repeat offenders are back behind bars after a traffic stop. Karen Johnson has the details. Blackler County Sheriff's deputies caught up to a repeat traffic offender on Martin Luther King Boulevard at the intersection of South Anderson Street, driving with a suspended license, logging 13 suspensions of his license since 2012. The deputy was able to use a variety of electronic resources to identify 30-year-old Jordan Manning and 27-year-old Edward Sampson. Sheriff Rick Staley says the traffic stop got even more involved. And when they pulled him over, a straw with a white substance fell out of his pocket. Of course, he claimed it wasn't his. After arresting him for driving on a suspended license as a habitual traffic offender, his license had been suspended. Deputies then conducted a search of the vehicle in the passenger and discovered a variety 
of narcotics. Both Manning and Sampson were arrested and are at the Sheriff Perry Hall inmate detention facility. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. A project to widen Old Kings Road in Palm Coast is nearing completion. Brittany Kershaw, Director of Public Information and Engagement for the city, says the contractor is on target to finish the project by September 1st if there aren't any weather delays. So they're taking it from a two-lane undivided roadway into a four-lane divided roadway. So there will be a raised median and sidewalks. And a lot of that has already been in progress, is almost done. The majority of the work in the beginning was underground. They had to move all of the city utilities, as well as any private entities that had utilities underground. So that was a large portion. A goal of the project is to reduce congestion on the roadway. As a result, all traffic lights will be adjusted to send more traffic onto Palm Coast Parkway instead of having vehicles backed up onto Old Kings Road. Observers say that the pandemic has caused a lot of isolation. Eddie Brous, a nurse practitioner and the owner of Soul Psychiatry, is one of those observers. He said on a recent episode of Flagler Health Matters that while keeping up with people online is great, expanding your human circle is even better. Brous said that you don't have to jump back into face-to-face with both feet, but the internet can ease you back into it. He added that your contacts can be a great help. Your contacts can kind of see your mood. And the better your relationship, the healthier your relationship with others. Browse said your friends are more likely to check on you if you keep up strong bonds with them. He said that when others notice changes might be the time to get some mental health help. Flagler Health Matters is on every Saturday morning at 1130 here on WNZF. The podcast is on the Flagler radio app. Tomorrow, dealing with anxiety. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll.